So good day everyone, welcome to PC315 presented by Group 2 and the topic for today is curriculum and the teacher and the teacher as curriculum. Now before we proceed to the very meat of the topic, let me ask you a question. How many types of curriculum are you familiar with? Are you even aware that there are different types of the curriculum? Well these are some of the types of the curriculum. So, when our teacher asks us what curriculum means to us, they always indicated that it means the overt or the written curriculum, like thinking of a curriculum manual with goals and adjectives or the textbooks. However, the word curriculum is defined from its early Latin origin means literally to run a course. If one thinks of a marathon with mile and direction markers, signposts, and water stations, this beginning definition is a metaphor for what the curriculum has become in the education of the students. Now, what is a curriculum? A curriculum is defined in different meanings, such as curriculum is taught in schools, a set of subjects, a content, a program of studies, a set of materials, a sequence of course, a set of performance adjectives, and a series of experiences undergone by learners in school and many definitions to mention. Now, when considering all the different definitions of curriculum and to finally know the types of curriculum, let me give you the next reporter. Ina, the stage is yours. Thank you, Miss Demi. So let's proceed to the four roles of curriculum and the teacher. There are four roles of curriculum and the teacher. These are the practitioner, researcher, analyst, and decision maker. First on the list is the practitioner. The practitioner is a professional, an educator, and a practitioner in knowledge and skills. The practitioner understands the central concepts, tools of inquiry, and structures to the discipline that he or she teaches and creates learning experiences that make these aspects of subject matter meaningful for students. Next is the researcher. According to Dewey 1929, Teachers' investigation not only lead to knowledge about the school, but also lead to good teaching. Teacher as a researcher involves the commitment to systematic questioning of one's own teaching as a basis for development. Also, teacher plays a role in investigating pedagogical problems through inquiry. Next is the analyst. The teacher is often a motivator for pupils, encouraging or reproving them as appropriate. The teaching or learning process is basically and essentially interaction between the teacher and students. Also, the role of the teacher as a social agent is an important part of the learning process. And lastly, the decision maker. A teacher needs to be an agent of change to develop his or her own professional learning which has encompassed strategies and interpersonal skills essential for managing change within a school. All decisions and actions are required to maintain order in a classroom such as laying down rules and procedures for learning activities. An effective curriculum provides teachers students, administrators, and community stakeholders within a measurable plan and structure for delivering a quality education. The curriculum identifies the learning outcomes, standards, and core competencies that students must demonstrate before advancing to the next level. There are 10 types of curricula in schools, and these are the recommended curriculum, written curriculum, Taught curriculum, supported curriculum, assessed curriculum, learned curriculum, hidden or implicit curriculum, concomitant curriculum, phantom curriculum, and null is what is not taught. The learning overview of this curricula is that the students will be able to define the roles of teachers as curricularists, discuss the roles of teachers as curricularists, reflect on how those roles affect the teaching learning process, to identify the 10 different types of curriculum operating in the school, and to understand the complexity of the term curriculum and describe the 10 types of curriculum. The first type of curricula in schools is the recommended curriculum. Most of the curricula are recommended proposed by scholars and professional organizations. The curriculum may come from a national agency, 
or any professional organization that has a stake in education. It actually refers to the impact of opinion shapers such as policymaker, educationists, scholars, professional associations, and legislators. The recommended curriculum provides a basic framework for the curriculum. It identifies the key learning areas. It specifies the boundaries as well as the destination. So, it guides the curriculum coordinator in formulating the academic standards to be achieved through various teaching learning programs. National educational policy is a form recommended curriculum. Next is the written curriculum. This curriculum that is sanctioned and approved for classroom delivery. It represents society's needs and interests. It translates the broad goals of the recommended curriculum into specific learning outcomes. Glathron, Boshi, and Whitehead 2006 note that the written curriculum is a specific as well as comprehensive and it indicates the rationale of curriculum, general goals to be realized, specific objectives to be achieved, the sequence of objectives, and the kinds of learning activities. The written curriculum is authentic where it is product of visionary educators and where it has deep and life-lasting effect on the learners, according to Walk 2010. The written curriculum can be generic or specific to region. So when we say generic, the recommended curriculum is usually developed at national level and is used at variety of educational settings. On the other hand, uh, region-specific curricular developed for a particular site, usually in district. The written curriculum is a practicable plan as it is resolved to compromise between the ideals recommended by the experts and the real situations suggested by the teachers, pupils, and parents. Therefore, it is essential that the teachers must have a clear understanding of the written curriculum to interpret or to interpret the demands of curriculum as enacted in government documents. Moreover, the professional development of teachers must be aligned with the written curriculum. give a lecture, initiate group work, or ask to do a laboratory experiment with guidance, that thought curriculum is demonstrated. Teachers being the implementers of curriculum occupy a crucial role in curriculum decision making because they decide on how to distribute their time to a particular activity or content. Students as being active participants in the education process, instead of sitting back and listening to the teacher's discussion, students must construct their knowledge through meaningful experiences. Since this curriculum is in the process of learning instead of product, for example, the teacher taught about problem solving, and some of his or her students didn't get the answer, but they tried their best to apply what the teacher taught them. 
In addition, this curriculum varies the learning styles of students, whether their learning styles are visual, auditory, kinesthetic, linguistic, and etc. And the teaching styles of the teachers is depend on how they will teach their lessons. The next type is supported curriculum. This is the availability of resources allocated to support and deliver the lessons well. To have successful teaching other than the teachers, there must be materials to support in teaching so that learners would adapt and they easily understand the lessons. If the teacher uses materials in teaching, learners will focus their minds on what the teacher is being taught. Before using the materials needed and presenting to students, the teacher should try it first or inspect if that material is okay and accessible so that when the time teacher will use it, his or her discussion is flawless and no technical problems, especially if the teacher will use technologies. Examples of the supported curriculum are textbooks, computers, audiovisual materials, laboratory equipments, printed materials, models, or charts. Any support materials that the teacher uses will help to enhance and make the learning and the teaching useful and meaningful. This curriculum should enable each learner to achieve real and lifelong learning because educators want the learners to succeed both in and out of the classroom. Learners must become teachers and leaders because students also have to shift from being passive receptacles of knowledge or acquire little knowledge in which the teacher needs to spoon feed their learnings into active participants in which students must do something to learn. No matter where they are in life, they may encounter challenges or in experiences they would never stop learning. So the fifth type of curricula is assessed curriculum or also called the tested curriculum. It is the process of collecting information to use in evaluation. There are kinds of assessments, diagnostic, summative, formative, and etc. Series of evaluations are being done by the teachers at the duration and end of the teaching episodes or units. Through assessments, it determines the extent of teaching or tells if the students are progressing or not. It involves all the tests in all formats such as performances-based, paper and pencil exam, oral recitation, reflective paper. It includes both formative and summative evaluations of learners conducted by teachers. Formative assessment is given during discussion. This would tell whether the students understand the discussions or the teacher needs to repeat his or her discussion. Summative assessment is given at the end of the units or the major exams. An assessed curriculum doesn't not only focus on the outcomes but also on the activities being implemented by the teachers. Because if the teachers didn't do well with his or her job, the outcomes may not be aligned with their objectives. The significance of this curriculum is it enables stakeholders or teachers to evaluate the written and taught curriculum upon the learners. Assessments are an important part as it both enhances learning and provides opportunities for students to reflect on what they know, understand, or can do. After giving any kind of assessment, teachers' feedbacks are also important. It helps them to develop more their understandings and they can chase their weaknesses and same as well to teachers. In addition, when teachers give assessments to his or her students, they should be continuous and not episodic because the teacher cannot easily identify if that student is a slow learner by giving only one assessment. Next type is the learned curriculum or the experience curriculum. This refers to the learning outcomes achieved by the learners. The capabilities of the students can demonstrate the end of the lesson and can be measured through learning outcomes. Learning outcomes can be manifested by what the students can do or perform, either in their cognitive, affective, and psychomotor domains. The test results will determine 
the learning outcomes of the learners and they can achieve it through learning activities like role-playing, debates, brainstorming, concept mapping, and etc. Teachers can also determine if his or her students are learning or not by giving individual output or activities. In this curriculum, students are classified as active learning or constructivist. The students use their learning or the current knowledge to build a new understanding. For example, they would be able to do things on their own just like flipped classroom. Students review the lectures before, during, and they participate in many activities in which they learn outside the class. The learned curriculum is important because without it, all of the previous curriculums would be pointless. After all, if some of your students do not comprehend or absorb the materials you are presenting or teaching, then the teacher achieves nothing or the expected learning outcome is not applied. So, to sum up, the syllabi given to you by the teachers are the written curriculum, and when the teacher starts to teach, that is a taught curriculum. When they ask you to use the internet and other resources to search for information about, about the given topic, that is what we call a supported curriculum. So, after that, the teachers need to evaluate your performance so students are given a test or exam and that is what we call the assessed curriculum so the assessed curriculum results will determine what you have learned and that is so called the learned curriculum and that will be the end of my report thank you and i will give you to the next reporter Thanks for that. Now the next type of curriculum is the hidden curriculum. Hidden curriculum refers to the unwritten, unofficial, and often unintended lessons, values, and perspectives that students learn in school. While the formal curriculum consists of the courses, lessons, and learning activities students participate in, as well as the knowledge and skills educators intentionally teach their students, the hidden curriculum consists of the unspoken or implicit academic, social, and cultural messages that are communicated to students while they are in school. It is unintended curriculum that is not planned but may modify behavior and influence learning outcomes that transpire in school. It is not um, deliberately planned but may modify behavior and influence learning outcomes. The hidden curriculum concept is based on the recognition that students observe lessons in school that may or may not be part of the formal course of the study. For example, how they should interact with peers, teachers, and other adults, how they should perceive different races, groups, or classes of people, or what ideas and behaviors are considered acceptable or unacceptable. The hidden curriculum is described as hidden because it is usually unacknowledged or unexamined by students, educators, and water community, and because of the values and lessons reinforced by the hidden curriculum are often the accepted status quo, it may be assumed that these hidden um, practices and messages don't need to change, even if they are contributing to undesirable behaviors and results, whether it's bullying, um, conflicts, a college enrollment rates, and, and the like. It should be noted that the hidden curriculum can reinforce the lessons of the formal curriculum, or it can contradict the formal curriculum, revealing um, hypocrisy or inconsistencies between a school's stated mission, values, and convictions, and what students experience and learn when they are in school. Like for example, a school may publish, publicly um, claim in its vision or mission statement that is committed to ensuring that all students succeed ac academically. But the review of its performance data may reveal a significant racial or socioeconomic discrepancies when it comes to testing scores, graduation rates, and other measures of success. And because what is not taught in school can sometimes be as influential or formative as what is taught, the hidden curriculum also extends to subject areas, values, and messages that are omitted from the formal curriculum and ignored, overlooked, or disparaged by educators.
So for example, if students earn good grades or extra credit for turning in homework in time, listening attentively, participating during class, raising their hands, and generally doing things they are told to do, the students may learn that compliance is important and that certain behaviors will be academically rewarded. So the hidden curriculum may include both positive or negative messages depending on the models provided and the perspectives of the teacher or the observer. Now let's move on to the next type of curriculum and that is the concomitant curriculum. Concomitant curriculum, this is what is taught or emphasized at home or those experiences that are part of a family's experiences or related experiences that are sanctioned by the family. This type of curriculum may be received at church in the context of religious expression, um, lessons and values, ethics or morals, molded behaviors, or social experiences based on the family's preferences. Now, the next one is the phantom curriculum. So first of all, what is the phantom curriculum? It consists of the messages prevalent in and through exposure to any type of media. So these components and messages play a major part in the inculturation of the students into the predominant metaculture or acculturating students into narrower or generational subcultures. That seems like a pretty definition, but we have to ask ourselves, how do we define media today? Why does this term media mean for us in our students? We define media as communication cha channels through which um, news, entertainment, education, data, or promotional messages are disseminated. So media includes every broadcasting and narrow casting media such as the newspapers, magazines, TV, radio, billboards, direct mail, telephone fax, and the internet. That's a lot of sources of information actually. So overall, the advent of social media helps to free us from the dictation by the traditional media outlets. But while less dictation means that we have access to more information, it also means that we have more of what might be deemed in inappropriate information that educators and parents would rather have censored out. The problems arise when students are unable to discern the difference between truth and manipulation. Students do not yet have the skills to determine when they are being manipulated by media through major news outlets, peer pressure, or advertisements, and students are going to require more careful supervision and instruction to help them navigate a media-heavy world. The next one is the null curriculum. Null curriculum refers to what students do not have the opportunity to learn. In this case, students are learning something based on the absence of the certain experiences, interactions, and discourses in the classroom. That which may not teach, thus, thus giving students the message that these elements are not important in their educational experiences in our society. The null curriculum is simply that which is not taught in schools. Somehow, somewhere, some people are empowered to make conscious decisions as to what is to be included and what is to be excluded from the overt or the written curriculum. Since it is physically impossible to teach everything in schools, many topics and subject areas must be intentionally excluded from the written curriculum. But the null curriculum is that when certain subjects or topics are left out of the overt curriculum, school personnel are sending messages to students that certain content and processes are not important enough to study. Unfortunately, without some level of awareness, there, there is also a well-defined implicit agenda in schools. So school personnel send this same type of message via the hidden curriculum. So these are important to consider when making choices. We teach about wars but not peace. We teach about certain select cultures and histories but not the others. Both are choices and our omissions send messages to students. That would be the end of my part. Next reporter, the mic is yours. Good morning everyone. So my topic for today is curriculum and the teacher. The teacher as curriculist. So what is curricularist? So curricularist is a professional who is a curriculum specialist, a person who is involved in curriculum knowing, writing, planning, 
implementing, evaluating, innovating, and initiating. A teacher's role is broader and exclusive of other functions, and so teacher is a curricularist. Teachers do a series of interrelated actions about curriculum, instruction, assessment, evaluating, evaluation, teaching, and learning. A teacher is involved with the curriculum continuously all day, but very seldom has a teacher been described as curriculum continuously all day. So, what does a teacher do to deserve the label as curricularist? The classroom is the first place of curricular engagement. The first school experience sets the tone to understand the meaning of the schooling through the interaction of learning, learners and teachers that will, lear, what, that will lead to learning. Hence, curriculum is the heart of schooling. Here are describing teachers teacher as curricularist. So first is knows the curriculum. Learning begins with knowing. The teacher as a learner starts with knowing about the curriculum, the subject matter, or the content. As a teacher, one has to master what is included in the curriculum. It is the acquiring of academic knowledge about formal, disciplines, logic or informal derived from experiences it is mastery of the subject subject matter next is writes the curriculum a classroom classroom teacher takes record of knowledge concepts subject matter or content these needs to be written or preserved the teacher writes books modules laboratory manuals instructional guides and reference materials in paper or electronic media and next is plans the curriculum a good curriculum has to be planned it is the role of the teacher to make a yearly monthly or daily plan of the curriculum the teacher takes into consideration several factors in planning a curriculum these are learners support material time, subject matter or content, desired outcomes, context of the learners, among others. Next is initiates curriculum. In case where the curriculum is recommended to the school from the DEP, from DEPED, CHED, TESDA, UNESCO, UNICEF or other educational agencies for improvement of quality education, the teacher is obliged to implement it. Implementation of a new curriculum requires the open-mindedness of the teacher and the full belief that the curriculum will enhance learning. Next is innovates the curriculum. Creativity and innovation are whole hallmarks of an excellent teacher. A curriculum is always dynamic, hence keeps on changing from the content strategies, ways of holding, blocks of time, ways of evaluating, kinds of students, and skills of teachers. One cannot find a single eternal curriculum that would perpetually fit. Next is implements the curriculum. The curriculum that remains recommended or written will, ne will never serve its purpose. Somebody has to implement it. Heart of schooling is the curriculum. It is this role where the teacher becomes the implementer of the curriculum. She is the she is at the height of an engagement with the learners with support materials in order to achieve the desired outcome. It is where teaching, guiding, and facilitating skills of the teacher is expected to be the highest level. Next is evaluates the curriculum. How can one determine if the desired learning outcomes have been achieved and is the curriculum working? Those are the two questions that we need to ask to ourselves or if we are already a teacher if we want to evaluate the curriculum. Next is knower, knows the curriculum. Teachers should know and understand it, what the curriculum is and what they should do with the curriculum. Curriculum should be understood by the teachers and other stakeholders to affect students, parents, politicians, businessmen, professionals, government officials, or even common people. 
some of the definitions of curriculum curriculum is a planned and guide, guided set of learning experiences and intended outcomes formulated through the systematic reconstruction of knowledge and experiences under the auspices of the school for the learners cons continues and will willful growth in personal social competence next it is a written document that systematically described goal goals planned objectives content learning activities evaluation evaluation procedures and so forth and the content of a subject concept and tasks to be acquired, planned activities, the desired learning outcomes and experiences, product of culture, and an agenda to reform society, make up a curriculum. Next is also these are the other definitions of curriculum. A curriculum includes all the experiences that individual learners have in program of education whose purpose is to achieve broad goals and related specific objectives, which is planned in terms of a framework of theory and research or past and present professional practices. Fifth, it is a program of activities. And it is a plan that consists of learning opportunities for a specific time frame and place, a tool that aims to bring out behavior changes in students as a result of planned activities and included all learning experiences received by the students with the guidance of the school. Next is here. The other terms, number seven, it provides answer to these three questions. What knowledge, skills, and values are most worthwhile? Why are they most worthwhile? And how should the young acquire them? Some points of view of other curriculists, since the concept and meaning of curriculum are shaped by personal view, this has added to fragmentation and some confusion. Next is, however, when we put together the different definitions from diverse points of view, we describe the curriculum as dynamic and perhaps ever-changing. Points of view about the curriculum can either be traditional or progressive according to the person's philosophical, psychological, and even psychological orientations. These views can also define what curriculum is all about. Next is planner. Plans the curriculum. Is it is the process whereby the advanced arrangement of learning opportunities for a particular population of learners is created. Teachers must consider planning at a variety of different levels. The most general level of planning is at the course level. What do I want students to gain from this course? What knowledge, skills, and dispositions are of most worth? The teacher is the planner to ensure that the lesson is appropriate for the students and the learning purpose. The teacher is also a diagnostician of her or his students' problems. Of course, course planning is important. It helps te teachers carefully consider their long-range goals within courses teachers must consider how their courses will be organized into smaller units instructional units are typically two to three weeks of instruction focused on a single single theme or question teachers must also consider a specific lesson that will comprise each unit for e effective teachers instruction is purposely and intentional never aimless or accidental Effective teachers carefully consider what content and scale they will teach, how the material will be organized, how students will learn, and what will constitute evidence of student learning. Next is teachers as curriculum developers and implementers. Planning and writing the curriculum are the primary roles of the teacher. A teacher is a curriculum maker. He or she, 
teachers as curriculum developers and implementers planning and writing the curriculum are the roles of the teacher. A teacher is a curriculum maker. He or she writes a curriculum daily through a lesson plan, a unit plan, or a yearly plan. The teacher addresses the goals, needs, and interests of the learners by creating experiences from where the students can learn. The teachers designs, enriches, and modifies. The teachers decides, designs, enriches, and modifies the curriculum to suit the learners' characteristics. As a curriculum developer, teachers are parts part of textbook committees, faculty selection boards, school evaluation committee, or textbook writers themselves. And the characteristics of a curriculum planner. So these are the three characteristics that a curriculum planner should have. First is open-minded. Next is willing to listen. And last is ready to adapt. So first, open-minded, it is an ind indispensable character characteristic in those who plan the curriculum. Understanding of the values of the past, practices, and of school community and traditions is important. Next, willing to listen. Well-founded criticisms on the curriculum and education must be listened by the curriculum planner. Remediation of the curriculum will strengthen the school program. Next is ready to adapt. There is a wisdom in adopting relevant foreign educational practices and must not resist change and experimentation. Curriculum leaders should critically and thoroughly examine educational practices in other countries seeking new plans, methods, and programs that will be useful in improving the curriculum of our country. Next is the use of research in curriculum planning. Research affects many curriculum in many ways, like for example, sound proposal present, presented for consideration. Next is people who are engaged in curriculum planning can do their jobs effectively because they are aware of the latest or least of you related studies about curriculum change. So that is all for my report. I hope you have learned something from this discussion. Thank you so much. or the one who initiates the curriculum in case-to-case -case, uh, basis where the curriculum is recommended to the students from uh, Deep Ed, CHED, DASDA, UNESCO or even in UNICEF and other uh, educational agencies for improvement of quality education then the teacher is in need or obliged to implement no, the said uh, curriculum. Take note that uh, implementation of a new curriculum requires 
the open-mindedness of the teacher and full belief that the curriculum will enhance learning. Next, uh, innovator. From the word innovate means to make changes or uh, introducing new methods. So the teacher as a curricularist must innovate the curriculum. We learned on the previous discussions that we had that a curriculum is always dynamic. Thus, it keeps on changing. So as a teacher, one must possess the quality of being able to innovate as well as to be uh, creative and because creativity and innovation are the hallmarks of an excellent teacher so in order to keep at pace with the changes in the curriculum we must possess those qualities implementer the teacher as a curricularist implements the curriculum the curriculum uh, that remains recommended or written will never serve its purpose unless somebody or someone has to implement it and that is the role of the teacher the teacher should implement the curriculum always uh, remember that the heart of schooling is the curriculum so uh, it is the role where the teacher becomes the implementer of the curriculum the teacher is at the height of the engagement with the learners with support materials in order to achieve the designed outcomes or the desired outcomes keep in mind know that uh, it is where teaching guiding and facilitating skills of the teacher is expected to be at the highest level evaluator the teacher as a curricularist evaluates the curriculum so what does it mean it means that as a teacher you have to determine if the desired learning outcomes have been achieved there are some questions that will guide the teacher as evaluator first how can one determine if the desired learning outcomes have been achieved? Second, is the curriculum working? So the key point here is that teacher as an evaluator is also a teacher as a motivator. As a teacher, try to uh, recognize your own norms or expectations. So keep your expectations fluid. Always remember that Evaluating is one of the key components of learning because it helps your students or the learners to learn. Conclusively, Plato quoted, Do not train children to learning by force and harshness, but direct them to what amuses their minds so that you may be better able to discover with accuracy the peculiar bent of the genius of each. In this rapid changing world as the skills, knowledge, and needs of students changes, so does the role of the teacher. A teacher's role is broader and it is inclusive of other functions and so teacher is considered as a curricularist. As quoted by Jan Dewey, if we teach today's students as we taught yesterday's, we rob them of tomorrow. That being said, I have spoken.